Hey, what's up? It's Jason from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an infinitely scrolling background that shows through another sprite using the sprite mask component. If you didn't see the previous video where I cover the basics of a sprite mask, go check that out before watching this. So before I dive into the details, I just kind of want to show what this looks like. I've got a sprite back there with a background, and we've got this foreground that has some transparency. We've got a little component here where we can adjust the scroll speed and make it go faster, or we can even turn it around and make it go backwards. All right, so I'm going to reset this and then go through the steps so you can do this yourself. All right, so here's what the project looks like to start. We've got the background sprite and we've got a window. Now, what we need to do is adjust this background sprite so that it's tiled. We want it to be three times the size that it is now. So it can scroll infinitely in either direction without popping off of an edge or anything. So to do that, I'm going to change the draw mode over here to tiled. And you'll see it's got a width of 19.2. I'm just going to multiply that by 3. So I can actually do this in the inspector just by putting a star and 3 and hit enter. And it automatically calculates it for me. Uh, one important thing to note though is you need to make sure that your sprite, when you select it down here, is set to full rect. If it's set to tight, this isn't going to work right. So with that set, we can just press play. And you'll see now the scrolling is working. Alright, so let's jump into the code and see what's going on behind the scenes that's making this happen. The first thing you'll see in this class is we have our scroll speed, which is just a float set to the value of 1. This is the value that we're editing in the inspector to adjust the speed and the direction. If we make it a negative value, the sprite is going to scroll in the opposite direction. So we use the serialized field attribute here just to make it visible in the inspector. We can also make this public, but it's a better idea and better practice to keep this private and use the serialized field unless we need to access it from outside this class. Uh, next we have the right edge and left edge variables that we're going to be caching and then a variable for the distance between edges which is stored in a vector 3 just to make it a little bit easier when we're uh, moving the object. So in our start method you can see first thing we do is call calculate edges which is going to get our sprite renderer and then we're going to figure out where the right edge of the sprite is and the left edge of the sprite. So this is going to be the right and the left edge of the center version of the sprite, not all the way to the edges. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. So if I hit play, I have some gizmos drawing here. And you'll see little lines here. So these are the lines where the right and the left edge are calculated out at. And once it gets to that edge, it pops back over to the other edge. So we calculate that by getting the extents and then just dividing by 3. Because we multiplied the sprite size by 3 in the tiling, we'd need to do the division right, again right here to make it right. Um, the next thing the start method does is just calculate out the vector for the distance between the edges. So we have the right edge minus the left edge. And we're just caching that here because we're going to be using it a lot. We don't need to keep regenerating the same vector 3. It's always going to be the same, so we may as well just keep it. Then in our update method, we take the transforms local position and we move it based off of the scroll speed times vector 3 dot right. So it's going to be by default just one on the x axis. And if we change the scroll speed to negative, it's going to go left because it's just going to be a negative value there. And then we multiply that by time dot delta time so that our speed is consistent across different frame rates. Next, we check to see if the sprite has passed an edge, and if it has, we move it to the opposite edge. So let's look at past edge. The past edge method just returns back a boolean. It looks at the scroll speed. If the scroll speed is greater than zero and the x position is greater than the right edge, then it returns true. Or if we're going the opposite direction, so our scroll speed is less than zero and the position's x value is less than the left edge, it'll also return true. Otherwise, it's returning false. So this will only return true if we've passed one of the edges based on the direction that we're going. If we have, we call move sprite to opposite edge, which again checks to see which direction we're going. So if we're going to the right, we'll set the position to negative, well, or sorry, we'll subtract the distance 
from the position. So if it gets far enough to the right, we'll subtract it over here and it just bounce back over. And then if we're going the other way, we want to go like this and then bounce over to the right by doing addition instead of subtraction. Uh, the final thing in here is just some gizmo drawing so that you could see the edges easily. And that's pretty much... Oh. So that's how the class works. I'll have the code available in a link in the description. You can check it out and kind of get a little bit more info on it. I'll also put some links to the sprites that I used. They were both just free sprites I found online, so you should be able to grab those or bring your own. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and then always check out the site unity3d.college for more information and just learn more about Unity. Thanks.